Welcome to Harding's Industrial Ethernet Week. Thank you for joining us today. I'm confident there's something for everyone to learn about industrial ethernet during the three sessions we have planned. Session one today focuses on the market surrounding industrial ethernet, what's driving the growth, how it's becoming prominent communication protocol, how industrial ethernet relates to legacy protocols, and mostly how end users can benefit from industrial ethernet. Our session today will be divided into three sections. First, we have Nazaria, our industry segment manager for automation, will be presenting the subject of today's panel and giving you some background on industrial ethernet. Then we'll move to our panel section. And then finally, we'll close with questions and answers. At any point in time, if you have questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll address them at the end of the session. Tomorrow, we look forward to focusing on how to select the right ethernet technology for your application. And lastly, in session three on Thursday, we'll focus on the latest trend in industrial ethernet, which is single pair ethernet and its emerging role in industrial applications. Now I'm going to turn it over to Nazario to introduce the subject of today's panel. Thanks. Thank you, Casey. So uh, not long ago, it's safe to say that many doubted that industrial ethernet could ever take the place of legacy field bus on the plant floor. And as we look, so we look at this slide back in 2016, field bus accounted for 58% of the market, whereas the industrial ethernet accounted for 38%. So people were pretty much spot on. But then as we look forward to, as we move forward to 2021, those numbers flipped, where now the industrial ethernet makes up 65% of the market and field bus all the way down to 28% of the market. So quite a drastic change. So what led to this change? There are many factors that contributed to this shift, such as the growing need for fast, reliable, and interoperable communication protocols, which actually has led to the emergence of industrial grade hubs, switches, and routers that make industrial ethernet communications more robust, predictable, and less prone to data drop. But again, the question is, what, why is this type of communication protocol required today? So to answer this question, we need to revisit the different phases of industrial revolution. We've all seen this one, right? Throughout the course of our history, there have been four industrial revolutions with the latest referred to, commonly referred to as industry 4.0. So what I'd like to do now is let's go back and take a look at the impact of each industrial revolution, starting with the first industrial revolution. Beginning in the latter half of the 18th century, the first industrial revolution transformed largely rural farming societies in Europe and America into industrialized and urban societies. Goods that had once been produced by hands can now be produced in mass quantities by machines powered by steam and water. Then in the 1870s, the second industrial revolution introduced to us electricity, steel and assembly line, which further improved our, our manufacturing capabilities, as well as mass production. And then in the 1970s, the third industrial revolution gave us electronics, automation and computers that required data transference, analytics and processing, which now brings us to the fourth industrial revolution. First coin is industry 4.0 and 2011, the fourth industrial revolution paved the way for digital transformation and opened a lot of new exciting opportunities for not only industrial automation, but manufacturing. With Industry 4.0, it's all about big data analytics to improve efficiency, visibility, pattern recognition, and collaboration on the factory floor. So the large amount of data that needs to be exchanged and processed in factory floor, well, the industrial ethernet's flexibility interoperability and performance make it a natural fit. There are other factors that certainly contribute to the growth of the industrial ethernet, which we'll touch on in the panel discussion. So speaking of panel discussion, we are now going to transition to it and touch on several topics in this, on the uh, industrial ethernet, such as market drivers and how it relates to legacy protocols. So please stay, so please stay tuned as we get ready for our panel discussion will be back in uh, 60 seconds.
Good morning again, everyone. I'm here today to introduce our panelists for our panel discussion. You've met Nazario, our industry segment manager for automation. I'd like to introduce uh, Peter Polak, who's a product manager for our custom solutions division. We also have with us Arnold today, a senior product manager with our interface solutions. And finally, dialing in remotely from our Cambridge MIT Innovation Hub, we have Vivek Dave. So we'd like to start our panel discussion today with the first question, and I'll direct this to you, Nazario, first. What is driving the growth of industrial ethernet? Yes, yeah, so Casey, in the opening, we talked about Industry 4.0 as the main catalyst for the adoption of industrial ethernet. But another factor that's contributing to the growth of the industrial ethernet is the fact that it's ubiquitous. It's widely known and understood. For years, field device manufacturers have been offering Ethernet offerings, or rather, Ethernet option on devices such as HMI, PLC, and sensors, to name a few. So, engineers, developers, and electrical support personnel understand the technology really well. And when you take into consideration its ability to support real time exchange of time sensitivity, time sensitive factory floor data in the industrial context, well, see, it's really easy to see why the industrial ethernet protocol continues to grow. Peter, do you see any additional growth factors? Absolutely. So another key factor behind um, the growth of industrial ethernet is uh, great availability and sizable portfolio from various vendors of industrial grade devices, um, such as ethernet switches. Um, since ethernet switches are products that interconnect multiple devices and allow these devices to talk to one another on the same network, they play a critical role in establishing uh, these ethernet networks, especially high IP rated products uh, that utilize IP65 or 67, they allow for direct mounting and integration on machines, which also allows for much easier and quicker network deployment since no extra protective enclosures or cabinets need to be utilized to provide that environmental protection. Another factor that I see is um, the development of time sensitive network technology. So historically, Ethernet had always struggled with the real-time communication and was always labeled as less reliable compared to the field bus protocols in addressing real-time communication requirements. However, with the introduction of this time-sensitive networking technology, or TSN in short, uh, Ethernet now can be utilized to provide reliable and deterministic communication that can support mission-critical applications and processes in any automation network. And those are really great points on TSN, Peter. What I would like to also add is the fact that TSN enables businesses to combine multiple types of traffic on a single network with no loss of communication or of performance for critical controlled tasks, including resulting in industrial ethernet infrastructure that permits all kinds of traffic to coexist regardless of whether it's a critical safety or motion control related data, video frames from inspection or even emails. And Arnold, for you, how would you characterize this growth of industrial Ethernet? Yeah. So, so the market of industrial uh, Ethernet, according to the Global Market Insight Industrial Report, was 40 billion in, in 2020. And this includes routers, uh, switches, uh, connectivity, cable assemblies, uh, getaways. And they expect to be 120 billion by 2027. So the growth is real. So what are the main drivers for this? I think first, to my opinion, is the increasing adoption of IIoT, Industrial Internet of Things, where all the devices are interconnected. Second, the growing adoption of Ethernet technology in the automotive industry, giving all the applications that require higher bandwidth, such as the LiDAR or sensor application or high resolution display. And finally, the rising demand of efficient communication network with increasing automation across various sectors. So I think those are the reasoning among the major drivers, in my opinion. Perfect, thank you. And Vivek, could you share a little bit about what all of this increase in data means for us? Yeah, no, absolutely, Casey. And I'd like to build on what Arnold had said about the introduction of new use cases that go way beyond just the traditional use cases of uh, industrial automation and control. So for example, uh, predictive maintenance, overall equipment effectiveness, 
you know, the IIoT applications that Arnold had just mentioned, these are all incredibly important, not just within the factory floor environment, but also across the entire logistical supply chain. And so these new use cases are driving a tremendous increase in data, uh, data at many different length and time scales that go beyond traditional industrial automation. And so really, I think the industrial ethernet based protocols are the only viable option to deal with this exponential growth of data uh, within the industrial environment and really within the entire uh, industrial ecosystem as a whole. Thank you. Before we move on to question two, please feel free to drop questions in the chat box at any time. So for question two, Peter, I'll start with you. Why is industrial ethernet becoming the communication protocol of choice? Sure. There are definitely various reasons um, why ethernet is becoming the communication protocol of choice. A um, few examples that immediately come into my mind are uh, the ease of monitoring, troubleshooting, and uninterrupted communication. Uh, we already mentioned a few things about the switches. Um, in fact, switches, especially the new generation manage layer two and three switches, they play a key role in those topics. With managed layer two and three switches uh, that have uh, network management control and redundancy features, they allow for a great network control, monitoring, troubleshooting, and provide excellent means of uninterrupted Ethernet communication, even if one node of Ethernet network is down. With various available redundancy features, Ethernet traffic can be redirected from a disconnected node, avoiding a complete network downtime. In addition to that, ease of monitoring and troubleshooting makes IT and network engineers job less complicated as they can perform the duties a lot more uh, efficiently. Perfect. And Vivek, in your experience, the simplification that Peter speaks about, how does that trickle down through the whole system? Well, you know, Casey, it's absolutely essential. And as Peter had mentioned, and I'd like to build upon that, the ease of integration installation, flexibility, and really maintainability is a very, very key feature. Because when you look at um, any industrial installation, it's not just how difficult is it to install on day one, but it really is how difficult is it to maintain over the entire lifetime of you know, the asset or the entire lifetime of the system. And also, there is a much larger pool of available technical talent I think, to work on Ethernet-based protocols as opposed to the legacy field bus protocols. And so this really addresses every plant manager or maintenance manager's nightmare of who do you call at 3 a.m. when something is not working. And I think the available pool of talent is much larger for Ethernet-based protocols. And so uh, they therefore enjoy uh, an advantage in this, in this area. And Arnold, in your experience, how does this connect to Industry 4.0? Yeah, so Nazero mentioned that we're in the fourth revolution right now. So I believe that the Industry Ethernet is becoming the communication of choice because it's just benefit the Industry 4.0. Uh, first, it will enable a unifying and efficient communication protocol between the IT and the OT space. So virgins. information technology and operational technology. Uh, or from the cloud all the way to the bottom of the automation pyramid, which is the field device level. A second, it will remove not only complexity, but also cost, because there's no need to use getaways that serve as a liaison between the two network. And finally, it will make the, our industrial factories smarter and more efficient, because all the Ethernet-based applications will enable more data transfers that lead to predictive maintenance, better asset management, or better decision-making. So in short, it will continuously make our industrial factories leaner. Nazario, anything to add? Yeah, so as we all know, legacy communication protocol is very specialized and requires years of experience and training to properly implement and support it. Fact of the matter is that the field experts who specialize in various field communication protocols are unfortunately entering the retirement age and their knowledge is not being transferred. Yeah. Now on the flip Thanks. side, because industrial ethernet, as we established is standardized and well-known, the, the learning curve for new engineers entering the industry is a lot shorter and certainly a lot easier 
making it an ideal communication platform for industrial applications and networks. Perfect, thank you. Let's move on to question three. On the topic of legacy communication protocols, what are the primary challenges that the market is facing today? And Peter, I'll start with you on this one. Sure, what I can say is two words, limited data. Mm. So as we mentioned, a um, few things about field bus protocols already can definitely recognize that while field bus protocols can be um, very reliable and can provide deterministic and reliable real-time communication, they definitely lack the speed and bandwidth that Ethernet can provide. We see increasing requirements for more data in industrial markets and data that needs to be exchanged at much faster rates. As we already mentioned, we're adding more and more sensors, smart devices into, the, into a network, and all of those require more data and more bandwidth to, uh, to support. A good example of that is a vision camera systems that can produce hundreds of high quality images that need to be processed and transferred extremely quickly. This is a requirement that just legacy protocols, field bus protocols simply um, are unable to address. And to add on to what Peter just mentioned, field bus communications typically support anywhere from one to 20 megabit data rates, which falls way short of the minimum data rates requirement of industry 4.0. In contrast, ethernet data rates are at least 100 megabits to support tracking and processing of data in real time, which is what is minimally required to support big data analytics and processing of industry 4.0. So Vivek, in your experience, specifically in manufacturing, are there any unique challenges that that industry is facing? Oh, no, absolutely. If we look at the manufacturing environment today, there are new demands and requirements that really focus on this area of agility and flexibility. <clears throat> so if we look backwards for just a second at what lean production was able to do, uh, it was able to revolutionize and eliminate a lot of the waste from mass production with concepts such as single minute exchange of dyes and the Toyota production system and so on. But fast forward to today, you know, Industry 4.0 is facing an entirely new challenge where there could be very high product mix, very high product volume variability in a production line. So, for example, one system may have to make arbitrary and contrary number of one of hundreds of thousands of part numbers in any arbitrary sequence. And this places tremendous new demands on automation and control systems. In addition, as an ongoing uh, after effect of the coronavirus crisis, you know, the global supply chain is still under massive disruption. And so this flexibility and agility is required across the entire enterprise and not just in manufacturing. And to be honest, the traditional protocols just simply cannot keep up. And so, uh, you know, the need to almost on a dime be able to shift what a factory is doing. Say for example, from going from making engines into you know, assembling electric vehicles, for example, uh, this is really enabled best by the ethernet based protocols. That's a very good point. Arnold, could you speak a little bit to how these challenges are playing out uh, in the market as we transition away from field bus and into industrial ethernet? Yeah. Um, definitely. So let me stay by saying that the thick communication uh, protocol will not disappear in the short or in the midterm. Mm -hmm. And even in the long term, uh, the percentage of yearly installed node will be reduced to a single digit because there are a few applications where field bus uh, communications provide greater values, uh, such as input output. Um, when it comes to some limitation, um, the reason that make industrial ethernet communication protocol growing are the same that make the field bus declining. I, I will list a few. I would join Peter and Nazario at this point. The field bus is not suitable communication protocol for application requiring high signal bandwidth, uh, such as machine condition uh, monitoring system. Second, um, even if it's a straightforward communication protocol, the required component are still expensive. And for example, the getaways you have to buy and install everywhere. And last but not least, with industrial application, there's the trade-off challenge between the bandwidth and the reach. 
So the field bus ha ha has the biggest problem. And it can provide you the bandwidth or the reach, or, and not the both at the same time. And I would take an example of two so, so I can explain it. If you take the CC link, for example, and you want 10 megabyte, it will give you 10 megabyte, but the reach will be 100 meters. Now, if you want to go over one kilometers, the band will reduce to 156 kilobytes. So you have either the bandwidth or the reach, and that's a big limitation right now that the single per ethernet, for example, can address by providing not only the bandwidth, so 10 megabyte, and go over one kilometers. In fact, go over two kilometers, according to the chip manufacturing. So this is the limitation I see for the field bus. And, and when you go look at the traditional industrial automation pyramid, right? So typically, your communication protocol from the office environment all the way down to the control is ethernet based. And then as you pointed out, by the time you get back to, you get to the field device level, that's when you have all those legacy field bus commissioning and, and commissioning becomes a nightmare because as we had touched on before, unfortunately the knowledge base is starting to shrink because of, of, of those field experts retiring. Yeah. And I could just attest to this, I, I've commissioned a couple of these things and it is very complicated. And so when you look at what we're foreseeing for the future of being able to take ethernet communications all the way from the cloud to the field device level, yeah. you're basically streamlining it. And to your point, you're eliminating gateways that would otherwise make that translation right from the yeah. field bus to the ethernet. So it becomes simpler, it becomes more cost effective. Yeah, no, that's a great point. So I would like to add also that the need of bi-directional communication when you're at the field device level, right? To communicate with the PLC and the control level, this is needed, the field bus cannot do this and also send the data all the way to the cloud, right? Those are the limitations that the field bus has. And that's why we see this decline over time, years and years. Thank you. Uh, before we move on to question four, I see we have a few questions coming into the chat. Please feel free to keep adding and we'll hit the question and answer session soon. So question four is, <laughs> How will end users, especially in manufacturing, benefit from this industrial ethernet? And Nazari, I'll start with you. Yeah, so Casey, plain and simple, the industrial ethernet connects manufacturing to smarter outcomes. With industrial ethernet becoming faster and capturing more and more data, enables manufacturing companies to realize the promises of Industry 4.0, such as, for, for example, achieving higher throughput, better product quality, and optimizing the overall equipment efficiency through, for instance, machine learning. And Vivek touched on some of our supply chain challenges over the past few years. We can certainly make it more efficient through pattern recognition. And, and this is just, and this is the thing that really makes Industry 4.0 exciting and, and the fact that we have industrial ethernet supporting it because this is just starting just, this is just really the start of it. And I can see other features beyond what we're seeing today. Yeah. Absolutely. Vivek, could you share some of the benefits that you see in the, in the market? Yeah, no, absolutely, Casey. And to build upon what Nazario just said, if we step back just for a minute and look at the most basic premise and, and really the promise of Industry 4.0 is the convergence of the IT and OT worlds as, as has been discussed. And really this is the way in which the physical objects in the real world have identities and attributes in the cyber world. Uh, now, the fact that on the IT side, we already use ethernet-based protocols and, and have for many decades. And now increasingly we're using those related and similar protocols on the OT side is very significant. Uh, this may seem like a trivial observation, <clears throat> but again, if you think back to the complexity of the installation, the maintainability over time, and the ability to rapidly get to the new use cases, such as monitoring, such as quality assurance, such as real-time understanding of what's happening across the manufacturing and logistics chain, this is absolutely critical. And you know, in a very recent study conducted by MIT, 
they found that people who, or the companies rather, who have really gone the furthest in the implementation of this entire smart uh, industry foral infrastructure are realizing up to 20% you know, gains annually. And when you think about that, that's tremendous in terms of cost reduction, efficiencies. Uh, so really the industrial based uh, ethernet protocols are enabling uh, this significant improvement uh, over the long term. That's very impressive and, and uh, you know, really can change the way that you run your production floor or your facility. We haven't touched yet on cybersecurity. Peter, could you speak to the benefits around security? Sure, absolutely. I see uh, that topic definitely is one of the key benefits that Ethernet brings to the table, um, which is the other uh, topic of the cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. um, to give a little bit more background, Ethernet data packets are significantly larger compared to those supported by traditional field bus protocols. And this allows Ethernet to have more encryption contained into each data packet, providing superior data security uh, compared to any uh, legacy communication technology. Uh, in addition to that, uh, hardware-based and software-based firewalls and uh, VPNs, uh, they can provide additional layer of that security to further protect the data carried over ethernet. And so as we all know, automation increases productivity and that of course translates into the, uh, the profit increase uh, for the companies. But at the same time, it also exposes those companies to uh, various um, means of, of cyber attacks. Um, therefore, it is extremely critical to implement a network that is capable of withstanding uh, those different forms of cyber attack. And Ethernet-based network is definitely the right platform uh, for that. Yeah, absolutely. And Arnold, can you close us out on any additional benefits that you see? Yeah, so the ultimate benefit um, for end user will be around increased productivity. So why? Because all end customers will take advantage of all the key technology we have in Industry 4.0, such as artificial intelligence, uh, advanced robotics, the proliferation of IoT, uh, cybersecurity, to leverage data analytics to take better decision when it comes to production, uh, all for predictive and preventive maintenance and all asset including machine on the floor. So to summarize this, actually, end customer will benefit for this industrial internet by being just more smarter for the factories or leaner, continuously being leaner and remove waste. So this is the, the benefit I see. So increased productivity. Perfect, thank you all. So we're going to move into our last question of the panel now which is how is Harding contributing to Industry 4.0 and leveraging this industrial ethernet? Nazario, I'd like to start with you. Good question. And as we've established and, and my colleagues have, have talked about with Industry 4.0, the focus is on big data and machine learning to del deliver increased productivity, efficiency, and reliability with reduced reliance on human, human to machine interactions and manufacturing processes. So to realize these benefits, Industry 4.0, as we stated, will need to collect more and more data so that different parts of manufacturing facilities are controlled and monitored in real time. And for this to happen, more automation field devices, such as sensors, vision cameras, to name a few, will be required to collect more real time or data rather in real time. And the truth of the matter is the footprint in the machines and manufacturing facilities are not going to get any bigger. Yep. So that means that the automation devices themselves will need to get smaller so that more of them can be installed in different parts of manufacturing machines to collect those tangible data. Uh, and for these devices to get smaller, well, the components that are used to build these automation devices will also need to get smaller. And that's where the connectors will come into play, right? So they'll have connectors that will need to also be smaller, more robust, more modular, enable more, fun enable more functionalities. And that's where Harding comes in. Harding continues to develop game-changing solutions that address the need for compact, robust, modular connectors that have more functionalities. 
I think that's the perfect teaser for tomorrow's session on um, the technology roadmap. And I how, set you up. Yeah, that's perfect. Some of these mega trends like miniaturization are influencing our roadmap. But to give you a sneak preview, Arnold, can you share a little bit about how what Nandazari was just describing translates into our roadmap here at Harding? Yeah, so for the product management perspective, uh, I believe Harding is contributing to, to this industry 4.0 by doing uh, three major things. Uh, first, we're enabling the industry internet connectivity by building a deep portfolio of solution, starting from circular solution, M8, all the way to M12, uh, our push-pull solution, uh, our IX industrial that we'll be talking tomorrow, the innovative and miniaturized solution, to the latest and the greatest the T1 industrial that will support the Singapore Ethernet. And everyone knows that Singapore Ethernet is the future of Industry 4.0. That's number one. And number two, we innovate, we miniaturize and compact solution, uh, such as the IX, and I will talk about this uh, tomorrow, or the M12 magnetics without jeopardizing the robustness and the high quality of our product. In fact, I would say innovating, miniaturizing those solutions without while increasing the functionalities of our product. And, and lastly, by pioneer the T1 industrial connectors, and that's a suitable uh, solution for SPE. Um, so it's worth mentioning that the T1 industrial has been approved by the three main major committees. So IEEE, IEC, and TIA. And it has been adopted now by more than 50 major well-known companies. So in short, I think Harding is positioning itself as an innovative partner that can deliver industrial ethernet connectivity solution for all industrial-based applications. So that's how we position. Also. And that's the cool thing about the SPE, and I'm probably stealing some of the thunder for, for tomorrow's presentation, but you know, we touched on about the need to streamline Ethernet communications all the way from the cloud to the field device, field device level, streamline it, simplifying it, and make it more cost effective, right? Yeah. And that's where the SPE, the T1, comes into play because now you have a medium that allows that that communications all the way from the field device level to cloud system, as you mentioned. Correct. Yep. Absolutely. And Peter, can you add to that from the full solution standpoint, how does Harding bring value to the marketplace? Absolutely. So as my colleagues Nazari and Arnold already mentioned, Harding has already introduced multiple connectivity solutions to support the growth of the industrial ethernet and the industry 4.0. Um, in addition to that, and to addition to the other uh, connectivity components and connectors, Harding has a broad offering of finished cable assemblies that utilize these new technologies, such as IX Industrial, as Arnold mentioned, and T1 Industrial, uh, which is, as we already know now, uh, the single per ethernet, uh, industrial single per ethernet connectivity uh, of choice. So uh, we have fully finished uh, cable assembly to support these technologies. Um, however, uh, we have also improved the standard ethernet uh, connectivity technology, technologies, such as RJ45, uh, and then 12 by introducing innovative solutions to make uh, the assembly and the connection process even easier and more user-friendly. Um, we'll do actually a deep dive as we mentioned already into these solutions tomorrow during our second uh, day of the industrial ethernet week. Perfect, thank you. Vivek, if you could close us out and share some a more of a long-term view on the same question around how is Harding contributing to Industry 4.0? No, absolutely. And I think it's very fair to say, as you've already heard, that Harding is involved with virtually every aspect of industrial information infrastructure. And now if we look out, say, five years, <clears throat> I think it's very clear that at the field device level, SPE will play a significant role as a future-proof technology for such applications. Now, at the intermediate levels application and, say, even cloud layers, there will be many other technologies, some of which are already having some impact, such as Wi-Fi 6, you know, 5G, 6G, 7G, and even 400K fiber optic coming out of the data centers and, and, and moving more into the industrial realm. That being said, industrial 
Ethernet-based protocols are definitely not mutually exclusive to such technologies. And, you know, down at the lower field levels, uh, they will definitely still be very pervasive. So I, I think in summary, it's fair to say that Harding is pr continuing to provide key connectivity solutions at all levels of the field and factory and overall industrial infrastructure for reliable performance well into the future. Thank you. So we're going to move now into our um, question and answer session. And I'd invite you all to not only drop questions into the chat, but also you know, give us some feedback. Are there additional challenges that you're facing with field bus or with industrial ethernet or even in that transition that we didn't articulate today? Are there um, benefits that you're seeing that we didn't outline? We'd love to hear that feedback as well. Feel free to keep them coming in while we get started on our Q&A. So I'd like to start with a great question that came into our chat, and I'm going to direct this one to Arnold. Um, why should someone in the field use industrial Ethernet over other common protocols? Um, why customer will use industrial Ethernet over the legacy communication protocol such as the field bus? Uh, I see three reasons. So the first is the need of having a unifying a communication network that take not only the IT, that on, that'll take only the IT and the OT space. So you can have unifying communication protocol across the IT and the OT space, or from the top of the pyramid, so from the cloud all the way to the field device level. So you don't need um, to, to have some getaways that serve as a liaison between the two networks. So the second reason, it removes complexity. So instead of having industrial ethernet connectivity and then the field bus where you have the getaways, you remove those getaways and put the distribution boxes that will serve just the industrial ethernet and the distribution box will be for the different application at the field device level. And, and then finally, I think the trade-off I discussed before at the field device level where you have the bandwidth and the reach, this could be a challenge when you are in the building automation and you want to have not only the bandwidth, but you want to have also the reach. So field bus will give you either the bandwidth or the reach, but having industrial ethernet and specifically single pair ethernet, you will have the bandwidth and the reach. So for those three reasons, I think it makes sense to use um, industrial ethernet going forward. And by and consolidating them too, it allows for peer-to-peer -peer communications to support edge computing, which we've been hearing about over and over again, right? The ability to, for, for machines to quickly make decisions on the fly as opposed to communicating all the way back to the cloud system. Yeah. It's instantaneous so that in terms of all the different benefits that we've been talking about for Industry 4.0, real-time instantaneous ability to make changes on the fly to accommodate, for instance, any type of uh, inefficiencies that maybe is uh, being recognized through machine learning. Mm -hmm. So that's the beauty of, again, simplifying and streamlining it to one communication protocol. Yeah. And if you look also, and I was reading actually lately uh, a week ago, you look all the big automation manufacturing companies such as Rockwell, Bosch, uh, Bake Off, they're developing right now innovative devices with, with ethernet-based application. So they, I won't say forced, but this is the trend. So end user don't have the choice then to use those innovative application, you know, that they will use for the industry 4.0 or for their factories. So field bus device actually is, is, is just declining. So actually I will also add a few things to, to the great points that you guys uh, just brought up. So we, we've mentioned uh, the need for, uh, for more, more data, more automation. That's where Ethernet can definitely provide a, a great benefit, right? But uh, we can't forget that uh, in order to implement um, the, uh, the additional networks, more automation, more data transfer, we need more devices. Um, so the key uh, fact into that is that, um, and the benefit for Ethernet is that uh, there's virtually no limitation of how many nodes and how many devices you can bring into one ethernet network, right? Um, in comparison, field bus protocols do have that limitation. Um, 
For example, DeviceNet, 64 nodes or devices can be integrated within one network. While with Ethernet, especially utilizing uh, IP version 6, uh, we're talking about millions of devices within one network, which again, virtually unlimited amount of devices can be integrated within one network. And again, with all of these devices communicating data, we have a better automation and, and a future-proof network that can support um, manufacturing processes for, uh, for the future. Unless I forget that, again, the knowledge base for legacy field bus is yeah. starting to fortunately get lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. I have a, I see another excellent question that's just come in, and I'd like to direct this one to Vivek. So Vivek, in your opinion, is industrial Ethernet something that is primarily on the radar for greenfield applications, or are we also seeing retrofits into brownfield applications? Now, that is a really good question. And when you look at the average lifetime of an asset uh, in the operational technology or the OT space, it's measured in decades. And hence, there's a tremendous opportunity in the brownfield for retrofit uh, to turn machines that may have utilized their data purely for automation and control purposes to now feed that data to uh, higher levels of, of the uh, you know, uh, information management system or the IT level where they can be used for things like predictive maintenance for uh, you know, real-time quality. And uh, so this is absolutely a major opportunity. And here again, ethernet-based protocols make that initial installation so much easier uh, you know, down at the field level. And so, yes, they are not just for Greenfield. Now, looking at Greenfield, increasingly, you see many automation and control vendors, PLC manufacturers, already building in very significant Ethernet-based uh, functionality, you know, into their devices for next generation. So, uh, in summary, there are tremendous opportunities in the, in the brownfield for retrofit to make uh, so-called dumb machines smart. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a tremendous opportunity going forward uh, with device manufacturers, control systems manufacturers already thinking about Ethernet-based protocols from day one. Thank you. Uh, I, what I would add actually regarding the brownfield and, and greenfield impact, um, specifically for the single pay Ethernet, so it's appropriate to use it for the greenfield. And those two Ethernet with all the different communication protocol, Profinet, Ethercat, it's easier to do the retrofit, right? With the brownfield application. But for greenfield, if you want to use single pay Ethernet, um, it's better because you use a completely new ecosystem in terms of the cablings, in terms of the chipset we use at the device level, at the PLC level, at the control level. Um, so it's a complete ecosystem we add. So it's appropriate to use the single per Ethernet for Greenfield going forward. Perfect, thank you. We've had two questions come in that are closely related and they are around wireless technology. So Nazari, I'm gonna start with you. What are your thoughts on the impact of private wireless in factory? And does it give you additional flexibility if you couple that with industrial Ethernet? So wireless has been talked about for, for quite some time in terms of potentially replacing some of the existing solutions. And the challenge has always been in the factory settings, there's a lot of electrical noise, vibrations and whatnot that can lead to interference. Mm -hmm. And there've been discussions about certainly 5G as potentially addressing that. But at the end of the day, until that security and the ability for it to address potential background noise and whatnot. I, I think it's still in discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. So if we go back to the chart that you present at the beginning, you will see that the wireless actually technology as communication protocol has been flat over the years. So it will remain for certain application, but for reliable and critical, um, command or application, we still need the wire. We still need the cable and make sure that the automation works, um, that the application, the device works. So wireless will work for certain application because the reliability issue associated with that. And another concern about that too, and, and, and Peter touched on it, cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Cybersecurity and you know, wireless still concerned of being able to 
penetrate it for, for security reasons. So until that gets addressed, I think it's still probably a big question mark for wireless eventually taking over the existing yeah. infrastructure that's in place. Oh, absolutely. I think um, wireless is a great technology, right? You can imagine um, our houses, apartments without wireless internet, you know, cables running everywhere, mm -hmm. connections from, from routers, modems to computers, printers, you know, that would be a nightmare. Um, however, the situation looks a little bit um, uh, differently in, in the industrial setting, as, as you guys already mentioned, we have a lot of uh, electrical EMI interference, right? This, this all impacts uh, wireless e uh, internet, uh, as we also touched uh, on, on topics of reliable Ethernet communication, especially the deterministic real-time data transfer, that's absolutely critical for a, a, a lot of mission-critical automation applications. Wireless Ethernet cannot simply address these requirements. There are too many uh, data packet losses over, um, over the, uh, the wireless Internet. Therefore, uh, we will still see the usage of wire Ethernet, especially in those important mission-critical automation applications, mainly to the real-time communication and bidirectional communication. Um, since we have receive and transceive with the wired, with wireless, we can either transceive or receive. So absolutely wire ethernet will stay strong in industrial mm -hmm. setting. So we've talked about key risks of cybersecurity and noise. Are there any other risks that are the, the field considers when they look at going to wireless in a manufacturing floor? Um, I think yeah, additional yeah. point would be, um, and it comes down to, to again, the cost, is you have to do uh, periodic surveys of your wireless network, right? You have a certain reach within the factory mm -hmm. and that changes uh, periodically. So uh, it's absolutely necessary to have those surveys done to make sure that your wireless ethernet covers the area you want it to cover. Yes. Um, so I think that's also another point of, of wireless ethernet that with wired, of course, you don't have to worry about. Perfect, thank you. So monitoring, you know, instead of I mean, getting the information on your tablet, monitoring what's going on in the factory plant, wireless would do this easily and there's no uh, issue. But when it goes, come down to, to, to automation where you have some secure signal you have to send to the devices, then wire, uh, wire communication mm -hmm. will, be, will dominate the, the, the communication. And Viva, can you speak to as our as the market looks to go fully to the industrial Ethernet or industrial Internet of Things? Could you speak to how wireless versus wired is being considered? Yeah, and and you know I would say there is no uh, consensus on precisely how to use five G and beyond in the industrial environment. <clears throat> and uh, I think as as Peter alluded to, cost is a non-trivial consideration. One may think oh, well, wireless is going to be cheaper just because I don't have to run cables and you know, therefore the setup time might be easier. But as it turns out, it's not. When you look at the operational costs of setting up a private 5G network and what's really involved in that, uh, the costs are actually non-trivial at the moment. Now, maybe those improve over time, maybe they don't. Uh, so I, I would say it's not an obvious uh, answer that, oh, we should immediately go to wireless. And so, you know, just to sort of reinforce what uh, my colleagues have been saying, I think there's definitely a role to be played at the field level uh, for Ethernet based protocols in a wired or cabled environment. And at other levels of the industrial Internet, uh, you know, sort of at the application layer and the uh, you know, the cloud layer, there, there could be a proliferation of technologies. But uh, I, I think at the field level, it's it, at least, you know, looking five years out, it's it's definitely still looking like wired is, uh, is the preferable way to go. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, great question just came in and I, I should have shared this earlier in the session, but all of these sessions today, tomorrow and Thursday will all be recorded you'll get a copy of the link. So if you want to watch it later or share it with a coworker, you're more than welcome to do so. Let's move on to our next question from the audience. Thank you everyone who's submitting these excellent questions. This one is, and I'm going to hand this to Vivek, how can industrial ethernet help a company achieve its future technology and business goals? Well, you know, this is a very, very critical question, especially in the times in which we live, in which there's been massive disruption 
in, in global supply chains, which I don't think is going to change in the foreseeable future. Uh, I, I want to just go back to that study that I had referenced earlier. Uh, it was a study conducted by MIT and McKinsey in which they looked at 100 companies and looked at 21 specific KPIs. And the best in class cohort of those companies is spending 60% more on uh, you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence, data analytics than say the bottom you know, 25% or the bottom percentile. And so you're really seeing a big differentiation in bottom line performance between companies who can implement these technologies and start to benefit from them much earlier, they are definitely going to break out ahead. And the more and more you implement these technologies, the harder it is for competitors to catch up. You build a bigger and bigger moat. And so I think industrial ethernet is absolutely critical to rapidly being able to deploy the various use cases that we talked about here beyond automation and control. And, and the reason for that really is that going back to what's been mentioned, the ease of installation, the maintainability, uh, the ability to support this new demand on flexibility in manufacturing with high product mix and high variable volume. And, and again, sort of this future proof field level communication with SPE. So I think we're at a very critical juncture where you know, companies are getting beyond just you know, the so-called proof of concept or, or POC purgatory, and they're moving into really benefiting from these technologies. So it's very exciting. And, uh, you know, the industrial ethernet is sort of a key component to that. Perfect, thank you. I think what you touched on also brings us to how does the workforce shift as we see these mega trends occur? And I know, Nazar, you've spoken to um, sort of the generational shift as we move to industrial ethernet. How do you see uh, that workforce and the knowledge base permutating into OEMs versus factory floor? And where do you see the workload shifting? It's a really good question. Um, in terms of how it shifts, I, I think it's still, you're not going to eliminate the, the actual workforce in the automation floor. But what's going to, but what Industry 4.0 is going to allow manufacturing to do is actually put those resources in applications that's not as mundane, not as repetitive, and actually enable them to focus on things that are a little bit more challenging. So at the end of the day, it's actually going to be a beneficial win-win proposition where now you're utilizing workforce and things that they're maybe a little bit more interested in. So productivity will go up, but at the same time, because of industry 4.0 and all the benefits that we've talked about, the efficiency through machine learning, through pattern recognition, and all of that is also greatly enhanced. So it's a win-win proposition. Yeah, absolutely. So we have just a few yeah, minutes I mean, left um, in our, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah Viva Care, I apologize. I, I just like to add to that because that's a very, very significant point in that Automation and control or automation and robotics does not necessarily mean elimination of jobs. Let's just look for a minute at what happened with robotic process automation. These are software bots in ERP. So for example, uh, CFOs can now focus on top line, you know, increasing top line revenue, increasing bottom line profits, as opposed to a lot of the mundane tasks of end of quarter reconciliation. Uh, if you look at the same effect, that people would be familiar with every day. When we introduced ATMs, bank tellers didn't go away. Now they're working on more value added applications for customers. So that's a very key point that Nazario brought up. Yeah, absolutely. So we have just a few minutes left in our session. Please feel free to drop any last questions into the chat box. For those that we weren't able to cover, we'd be happy to respond to you directly via email. Uh, so, Nazari, I have one question for you, which is, are there any additional values coming in for industrial Ethernet that we should share with the, the audience here today? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, we, we briefly touched on better product quality. That's one of the main benefits that manufacturers can realize with Industry 4.0 through industrial Ethernet. But I want to expand on this just a tad more, as we had talked about IAOT, 
and big data technologies enable the collection of a lot of data on industrial processes. Sounds all good, but what does this actually mean? Well, through smarter big data analytics, plant operators are now able to obtain a level of granularity that was not possible before, giving rise to accurate detection of quality problems at various timescales. So what this means is that, for, for instance, I'll give you an example, digital data about production line can be collected and used to identify problems as well as inefficiencies while also recommending corrective actions. So this also enables quality management disciplines such as total quality management as well as zero defect manufacturing. So while TQM and ZDM have been around for more than two decades, the industry 4.0 makes the business case to implement these quality management disciplines more compelling and cost-effective. No, um, I think that's a very good point. Like I mentioned before, I think it will, the biggest value, you know, for industrial internet in industrial industry or in the third revolution, it will make factories leaner. So I remember uh, I used to work actually on assembly line in Germany while a student to cover my leave expenses. And you, you can see an operators actually controlling two machines, right, at the same time. Now with the industry 4.0, leveraging industrial ethernet, the operators can have a tablet and control at the same time six to 10 machines. Because if there's an error, the machine will send the data to the cloud and it will come back to the tablet. So the, the operators should be able to anticipate those errors, those failures before the machine actually uh, get defect and, and fix the, the machine before um, you have the failures. It goes back to predictive maintenance as opposed to preventative maintenance, right? Because yeah. we talked about overall equipment efficiencies and, and really in order to realize that and, and move away from the usual um, preventative maintenance. That's why more, more important than ever is the ability to utilize all the big data analytics and the machine learning that you can take away from it to enable manufacturing uh, facilities to improve on, on, on the uh, uh, overall efficiencies. Yeah, it's all about removing the waste and make the business leaner to increase productivity. Mm -hmm. That is the ultimate benefit for end user and end customers. And certainly as a company, Harding has embraced that fully with some of our fully automated lines that use exactly these processes that we're describing. Yeah. Yep. Well, we are out of time. Thank you everyone who's joined us remotely. For those questions that are still here, we promise we'll go back to you via email. Please feel free to continue to drop them in and we'd be happy to have one of our experts reach out. So thank you all. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for our session where we discuss how to turn some of these industry technology megatrends into a product that can be um, impactful for your production line. Thank you. Thank you.